It's Umsum time. How does a 3D printer work? Simple. Mix 3 and D, and you get a 3D printer. Oh, Umsum. <laughs> to buy Umsum merchandise, visit umsum.com. <laughs> A 3D printer uses a method called fused deposition modeling. In this method, a 3D model is printed from the bottom up, one layer at a time, by repeatedly printing over the same area. Hmm. First, a 3D CAD drawing is fed to the printer. The 3D printer divides the 3D drawing into two-dimensional, cross-sectional layers. These layers are basically like separate 2D prints which sit on the top of one another. The only difference is that there is no paper in between. Now if we were to use ink to print them, it would not be possible to get the volume necessary to build a 3D model. Hence instead of ink, the 3D printer may use molten plastic. The molten plastic is fused together using an adhesive or ultraviolet light. Hmm. How does huh? a pulse oximeter work? Shh! It is a secret. Oh, I'm some. <laughs> pulse oximetry is a test carried out using a pulse oximeter. This test is used to measure the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. Hemoglobin is a protein present in our red blood cells. It transports oxygen from lungs to cells in our body. Pulse oximetry is based on the principle that oxygenated hemoglobin and deoxygenated hemoglobin differentially absorb red and infrared light. Hmm. Oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs greater amounts of infrared light and lower amounts of red light as compared to deoxygenated hemoglobin. Hmm. Now, a pulse oximeter has LEDs which emit red as well as infrared light. These lights pass through our finger and are detected by a photodiode on the opposite end. Finally, by measuring changes in the light absorption, a pulse oximeter is able to give us the oxygen level in our blood. Hmm. Topic Resonance <laughs> How does sound break glass? Obviously using a hammer. Ah. Nah, huh? it is because of resonance. How does an owl fly so silently? Because of a soundproof jacket. <laughs> nah. Usually, when birds fly, oh. they make sound. This is because when they flap their wings, the wings create violent, unsteady movements in air. Hmm? This is called turbulence. Turbulence produces sound. However, hmm. an owl's wings <laughs> have some special features that help it to fly silently. What features? The leading edge of an owl's wing has oh. feathers that are serrated hmm. like a comb. When an owl flies, these serrations break air into smaller streams. Then, as the smaller streams of air move towards the trailing edge, the soft fringe on the trailing edge breaks up the smaller streams even more. This causes very less turbulence, thus creating very little sound. However, even this little sound produced by turbulence is absorbed by the velvety feathers present on an owl's wings and legs, thus helping owls to fly silently. <laughs> How does blood clot? With the help of glue. Not at all. Our blood consists of red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, clotting factors, etc. suspended in a liquid plasma. Hey, I too have a plasma. Look. Oh, please listen. Usually, when a blood vessel gets ruptured and we bleed, oh. our blood begins to form a clot. First, the platelets start sticking to the broken vessel and each other, thus forming a loose plug. But this plug is not enough to stop bleeding. 
Hence, the clotting factors take part in a complex chain of chemical reactions and create fibrin strands. These strands crisscross one another and create a mesh that tightly holds the loose plug together and makes it strong. Red blood cells and white blood cells also get trapped in the mesh, thus creating a blood clot that completely stops bleeding. <laughs> Topic: Caffeine How does coffee keep you awake? By throwing an overnight party. Nah. Huh? When we perform our daily activities like thinking and playing, a byproduct called adenosine is produced. Adenosine slows down the brain activity. But how? In our brain, there are adenosine receptors which are perfectly molded for this adenosine. Hmm. When the adenosine binds to these receptors, it activates them, causing to slow down the brain activity and thus making us feel sleepy. Huh? However, drinking coffee keeps us awake and we don't feel sleepy. This is because coffee contains a drug called caffeine, which after digestion reaches our brain. Caffeine is structurally similar to adenosine. Being similar, caffeine binds to the adenosine receptors and thus blocks the adenosine from binding. <laughs> Hence, as adenosine does not bind, our receptors don't slow the brain activity. As a result, we remain awake. How does a spider make its web? <laughs> no. On its underside, a spider has organs called spinnerets that spin silk threads. First, it connects two endpoints, like two branches with silk threads forming a bridge. It then releases a loose thread. From its center, it adds a new thread, pulling it to form a Y shape. It joins the three points to form a frame, then lays radial threads till the web becomes strong enough. Finally, from the center, it spins spirally, completing the web. How does thyroid affect our weight? Thai what? Is it some kind of Thai curry? <laughs> nah. In need of energy, oh. the pituitary gland present in our brain releases thyroid-stimulating hormone. This hormone informs the thyroid gland present in our neck to release hormones like thyroxine and triiodothyronine, which instruct our cells to burn <laughs> calories and in turn produce energy. This is basically called metabolism. Hmm. However, in some conditions like hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism, our thyroid gland doesn't respond properly to the pituitary gland. In hyperthyroidism, it releases more hormones even when we don't require extra energy. This increases metabolism, causing our cells to burn oh. more calories, and thus leading to weight loss. Hmm. While in hypothyroidism, it releases very less hormones, causing our cells to burn fewer calories, thus leading to weight gain. Hmm. How does water get inside a coconut? Simple. I put it inside using magic. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Firstly, roots of the coconut plant absorb water from the soil by a process called osmosis. This water is then transported to different parts of the coconut plant. Some of it reaches the coconut. The liquid, which eventually reaches the coconut, is referred to as the endosperm. This endosperm acts as the food or nourishment for the coconut's growth. Now, a part of the endosperm gets converted into a creamy tissue and gets deposited on the coconut's inner surface. Over a period of time, this creamy tissue turns hard and the remaining endosperm ends up as coconut water. So this is how water ends up inside a coconut. How does an electric bell work? No idea. I did not invent it. Oh, I'm um, some. An electric bell consists of a bell, an electromagnet, switch, battery, clapper, and a coil. When the switch is closed and electric current passes from the battery to the electromagnet, this leads to the creation of a magnetic field. This magnetic field attracts the iron arm of the clapper. As a result, the metal ball strikes and we hear a sound. Hmm. Now, this movement of the arm also leads to the opening of electrical contacts. This interrupts the current to the electromagnet and causes collapse of the magnetic field, causing the clapper to move away from the bell. Now, this movement of the arm leads to the closing of the electrical contacts again. Thus, the cycle starts repeating itself. As it repeats rapidly, we hear <laughs> continuous ringing. This is how an electric bell works. Hmm. How does a snake move? Simple. 
It moves like the famous umsum. Oh, umsum. Snakes display up to four different types of movements. Firstly, serpentine locomotion. In this type of movement, the snake moves in the form of a sinusoidal wave. Secondly, concertina or accordion locomotion. In this type of movement, the body of the snake contracts and expands successively like an accordion or a spring. Thirdly, lateral displacement or side-winding locomotion. In this type of movement, the snake moves laterally by forming vertical waves. In this way, it minimizes contact with the surface. This type of movement is typical of snake species found in desert areas. Fourthly, rectilinear locomotion. In this type of movement, the snake crawls in a straight line with its body stretched. This type of movement is commonly found among larger snakes as it allows them to access narrow burrows of their potential prey. Hmm.